Hello, welcome to Toffee TV. It is our season review. The 23-24 campaign is over. Thank God. Um, Everton are fine. Just about. Mm. We survived two points deductions. The ownership battle is still got battle. The ownership thing is still going on. But one big thing. It's definitely a thing. One big thing. We've got a manager that we started the season but <laughs> actually finished the season. Yeah. And that is a... Uh, for Huge. Everton over the last few years, that's quite a big achievement. Mm. Huge. I mean, really, we may as well start there because is that an indication of how well a job Sean Dyke has done? Also mixed together with the fact that Everton have, very, have been very unstable this season because he, we did have... Let's get this out the way straight away. We went four months without winning the mm. game. We broke a 67-year record of going 14 games not winning. And we also suffered our heaviest defeat in 19 years in this season. Um, in other times in Everton's history, the manager may not have survived. But he has survived. He started the season. We finished the season with him. And he should be the manager going into next season, barring any mad, more madness that happens at Everton Football Club over the summer. Yeah, I suppose it comes down to what you do. Like he said, a season's work, isn't mm. it? Um and yeah, it's it depends how you look at it, doesn't it? Yeah, you, we did, we did go a long time without winning a game of football, but we also the points we ended up getting have mm. been a lot better than um, some of the recent years, and mm. the the points that we would have got it without the deductions as well, and there's other factors. Obviously, those deductions, those deductions need to be factored in. Mm. How that affects human beings yeah. and morale and morale within the fan base and things like that. So it's really hard to. It's really hard to sort of make a definitive, uh, you know, answer or give a mm. definitive answer on that just because of all those factors. But ultimately, we did win forty-eight points this season, mm. um, and the manager's done a really good job from that point of view, and, and a really good job of keeping everything settled. And it could be the best thing that ever took, that ever happened, <laughs> having that, not mm. having a trigger happy um, owner. Mm. The emotion with the emotions, because as, as a fan, obviously you do let the emotions get the better of you when, when you're seeing things the way the way it what it was going on and dragging on, but ultimately the manager kept um, kept everything quite level headed, mm. and, and we ended up doing quite well in the end. Yeah, I mean we started obviously the summer wasn't amazing, <coughs> you know he he done a good job kept us up, and then the summer. Mm. I think he didn't. He, he said himself a few times, hasn't he? Not quite what I was told when I come mm -hmm. here. And I imagine getting to that last summer, and there wasn't a huge amount of money to spend. I didn't, didn't nearly spend any, did they? Um, and therefore, we started the season. You have Jared Brantway back mm -hmm. in the squad. Obviously, we got Jack Harrison in on loan. We got Arna Danjuma in on loan. Mm -hmm. We were hoping, you know, Beto came in as well. The season had started, but Beto come in as well in that summer transfer window. Ashley Young, who was the first, I think, wasn't he? Um, come in the door as well. We started the season with what looked like some favourable home games, didn't we? Mm. To try and kick the season off. You know, Fulham at home, team that's mid-table-ish, you know, one of the opportunity to get off to a, a good start, yeah. followed by Wolves, who were a team that looked like they were struggling a little bit. But... The real disappointment in all of that was we lost the first four home games, which set a... It, it put us on the back foot, didn't it? You know, it, and the manager as well, if we'd have won. Two, you know, we had, in the first four games, we had Arsenal was one of them. So if you'd ignore Arsenal, we had Fulham, Wolverhampton Wanderers and Luton Town. And now on paper... I think we all would have looked and gone, that's nine, that should be nine points. Well, Arsenal was our fifth game, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Arsenal fifth. Fifth game, course, yeah. But we had the opportunity yeah. in the other three games, the way they played out, to go, we should, we should get off to a good mm. start at home. Obviously, Villa away, we knew was always going to be yeah. a tricky game. Brentford and stuff, but it, we just started. We missed a, a great opportunity in that Fulham game after three minutes to Corey, and that seemed yeah. to set us up to struggle at home for the first Yeah, the, uh, ultimately, few games. it was... The, it's, it's the perception going into a season, isn't it? Mm. The fixtures coming out and everyone thinking we need a really good start. Mm. And not to, to get not get a good start, put everyone on edge. Everyone yeah. felt 
we didn't we we knew something was hanging over us, but we didn't know how bad it was going to be either. So you've got this idea of you know it's going to be a difficult season. You've got teams that are you know winnable at home. You know, Fulham, Wolves, Sheffield United away. They're games where you're thinking you've got to get a couple of wins out of them, and to come out of those games without without any wins. Obviously, Villa was always going to be tough, and Arsenal home was always going to be tough. But to come out of those games looking the way we did, and Sheffield United only getting a draw, and everyone thought that well, they're a team that are going to be relegated, and ultimately were relegated. It puts you on the back foot straight away, and it's like a tinderbox, isn't it? You, you... The emotions of of the whole thing, you know, it's always that thing of being three games away from from being in trouble, and that's the way that's the way it's built. The last few seasons, every season just feeling like it carries on to the next one, not having a break. The ownership situation, everything, you know, at the time of the beginning of the season, it was all about MSP and then it changed into 777. It just felt like everyone was under massive amounts of stress. And, and after what's happened in the seat two seasons before, how do you get away from that? How do you change that? It's really difficult. So it really was an absolutely terrible start for well, the, us. I think the thing was, though, in you know, you're looking at those games. The Arsenal game aside, mm. it's three games were very similar. Like Fulham, yeah. we had all the chances. They broke and scored. We lost the game. Wolves, we had a host of chances. They scored in the last minute and beat us. Mm. Luton, come out. We're all over them. They break, score. We're all over them. They break. Yeah. You, you 2-0 down and then you chase the game. Mm. You get it back to 2-1. And then the second half turn in, then we want to an absolutely woeful yeah. performance and we lose the game. You're four games in at Goodison, you've lost all of them. Mm. You know, and you're right, that, that sets the tempo. We went, you know, for the rest of the season, we went and won at Brentford, which was a really positive result. We won at Villa in the Cup, which is another really positive result. Mm. And then we had Luton at home. And we lose the game, yeah, yeah. you know, and if you go, on, we just got a bit of momentum, it's gone. But Bournemouth came, and that was a big win, mm. you know. We had to, it was our first home, when we won yeah. it comfortably. And then we move, we're trying to move forward, then aren't we? We're building a little bit of momentum. Yeah, but yeah. you're absolutely right. That ownership thing had started. It moved to triple seventh when we all thought, when it it, it been, it seemed like it was going to be MSP, didn't it? Mm. And then the big kick in the bollocks comes when we were in decent form, yeah, had yeah. some positive results. I think I think we'd won at West Ham, hadn't we? We'd yeah. won at Crystal Palace, that right, isn't it? Yeah, and Burnley then in the get, cup. Burnley in the cup. And then we get the the ten points deducted. Mm. You know, and I said at the time, I and before that, I never believed we'd get a points deduction. I really didn't. Mm. I thought the worst that would happen, we'd get a suspended thing yeah, of yeah. If you do it again, I mean, ironically, we would have then been given points deductions with, with what I thought was going to happen, but that shell-shocked us, didn't it? Ten points. No, of course it did. It was horrendous, and you, we, we, were, we were in good form. You know, we were looking at that mid-table, mm -hmm. um, going into, obviously going into a part of the season where it can be, obviously it's massively congested, mm -hmm. and we knew what the size of the squad was. And I think, you know, it, just getting that, being in an international break, coming off the back of Palace, where everyone was so positive, it was a great win at Palace. Coming, you know, coming back and um, being pegged back a couple of times and then getting the winning yeah. goal, where sort of a lot of the time people would think it would go the other way. Mm. And to get that ten points without any context mm. or just and just feeling like what the hell is going on here? Because obviously it was the first time it happened, so mm. nobody knew. Whether it was we could, you know, whether we'd be able to change it or or, or anything, and it was just a massive shell shock, and obviously, mm. it brought something out again in the fan base, which again, it's it's not it's not ideal, is it? If you're protesting again, we protested for the whole of the season before the second half of the season, we managed to get rid of the board, and um, and then this creates a new drama, and we're in the midst by then of having a temporary board, triple seven. 12 weeks and all that and it was just just chaos absolutely mm. chaos at the football club just just certainly from the outside looking in it just seems like pure chaos and to be fair to sean dice he's the one who had to deal with it all and had mm. to handle it all 
But there's not doesn't really feel like internally there's anyone really um making big decisions. Obviously mm. Colin Chong did the did that video and, and you know said we'll fight it and stuff, but it's not very not wasn't very very convincing. Mm. So just a really, really bad time. Really, really bad time. And obviously when you come back for your first game and you're playing Manchester United and there's all eyes on the world are watching and there was the march before the game and um, and then we know what happened. But that's it. We, we come back and, you know, Garnacho scores a worldie mm. and takes any momentum away after three minutes and, and still rankles with me that defeat because they yeah. weren't very good no, that day and he beat us 3 0. But we did, you know, the manager galvanised it. We mm. won four games on the run despite yeah. it. And we've won the four games on the run and we're expecting to hear that triple seven now own the football club weren't we we expected that decision to be within December mm. we're now in the middle of December on a four game run yeah and we had Fulham at home in the quarter final mm. of the Carabao Cup a great opportunity yeah you know we're home against the team they'd already beaten us at Goodison but we you know we felt confidence in mm. this and a game that we should have won again again they didn't really do anything they no. broke and scored with one of their only chances we equalised, better we equalised later on. Dan Juma missed a volley to win it for us. And we go to penalties and even in the penalty shootout, we've got the opportunity mm -hmm. with Amadou Onana slotted in. We're in the semis of a competition. Momentum continuing to go. And we know he walks up and takes a, does a stupid run up and takes a shot on penalty. And we go out and... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Dishagana Gay missed as well. No, but Dishagana Gay did. And what I mean is, yeah. that was the opportunity to put us through. No, I know. It, it, they carry on. Gay did miss. It carried on. A Dishagana Gay at the post as well. And, you know, would have helped if Jordan would have saved a couple of pens as well in that. Um, of course, because it's a team thing. But what I mean is, that was the moment on yeah, had yeah. to put us in. And then obviously that coincided then with some tricky, you know, we went to Spurs and we were. We were robbed of Tottenham, really. You know, we had a couple of really poor decisions. Should have had a penalty. Michael Oliver, hey-ho, continued to stitch us up all season. We had the goal disallowed when the on-field referee and Lyson mm -hmm. said there was nothing wrong with it. He then went and changed his mind. You know, Dan Juma is a, a millimetre away from getting us a draw. Mm -hmm. We go and lose to City. We, we again, more VAR problems. And then all of a sudden, we were in this tailspin after Christmas where we were on a losing run. We got a few injuries. The squad was. I, th tested. I think the Corey got getting injured. And the Corey in the obviously course, was yeah. huge. You know those four games. Mm -hmm. It did take a lot out of out of people. Those four games. Yeah. It did feel like, you know, because let's not forget we were, you know, two of them were like a Thursday Sunday as well, mm -hmm. weren't they? And they did seem to take a hell of a lot out of the team and and be, and it almost felt like the manager was was putting everything into the front end of the season, hoping that. You know, we get enough points on the board, mm. then we'll just. And really, in re in reality, that without the point deduction, that would have been that would Probably have been the, the, so. the truth, wouldn't it? We would have, we would have got to the, we would have got through the second half of the season just gradually mm. picking up draws and maybe the odd win. The Corey going out because we'd never never won without the he never won without the Corey Addy, mm. um, and that was a massive moment and. Um, yeah, and then uh, yeah, more players getting injured, the pile up of the fixtures in December, and then New Year's Day sort of was the the lowest, the lowest till a, till the Chelsea game. But it was a it was a day where you just felt we haven't got anything here, yeah. and it showed on the pitch. It was like you could tell we had nothing. Everybody was was completely out, mm. completely out on you know, and um, and then obviously. The FA Cup a few days later playing Crystal Palace and you thought he's going to go weak here, but he didn't. He kept it quite strong and we got a draw and obviously Don was sent off for for nothing. Mm. He obviously got that sorted, but it 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 just it just felt like he'd put everything into it and and because and then it was weird because it was like because there wasn't that many games in January. Mm. It felt like just like a it was just like a drip 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 effect and before you know it a month's gone and then and and. and we just because again the Corey got injured again, didn't he? Mm. He'd come back for one game against Villa, wasn't it? Yeah. And then he got injured again, and it was we still hadn't we still had not won a game without mm. him, and it wasn't until the Crystal Palace game in the in the replay that we won a game without him. Mm. Um, still haven't won a league game without. Him. No, no, and it and it and that that was a big that was a that's still a big thing. It's like mm. nobody could take his place in the mm. team. 
you know, we saw it in, in Vice's first season when he got sent off. And certainly in that in that period, and I don't think the Corey ever came back the same player that no. that was in the team. And it it was just the games were just started to just be played out, didn't he? Like so Fulham, which was a nil nil, the Villa, which was was it one one, and Spurs, which Villa was nil nil, nil sorry, Tottenham was two Tottenham was two two, mm. and those games we just couldn't quite get over the line, and um, those months just started just West started. Ham. Yeah, took totally. the lead against West Ham and got beat three. And, and obviously playing Luton and going off the FA Cup was a massive disappointment yeah. as well. Last Having minute. them again yeah. at home and it playing out in the same way, mm. and it's it felt like it just felt like that period of time was was it was just getting just felt like it was starting to get away did, from us. Did you think because we were in limbo as well, we were waiting for the appeal? The ten points was very mm. real. You know, don't let's not forget. I still think this has been massively underplayed yeah. this we had to play three months with a 10 point deduction that was deemed wrong yeah you know we went we we slipped right down the league monetary value and everything players playing under pressure mm. the manager being under pressure those games were going by we were waiting for the appeal <laughs> we eventually had the appeal and got four points back which would give everyone a, a boost when it needed mm. to we still weren't winning because we were just in a tailspin, weren't we? And then obviously we'd only just got that out of the way, and we had uh, we were getting done again, and there was another, uh, you know, another independent commission to come, and it really did seem for a few months, you know, the triple seven takeover was dragging on and on, despite saying, "Oh, it's going to be the end of the month, mm. and it'll be the end of the month." I mean, you know, thank God, I suppose now um, it seems, but right then. You just wanted the finality. I think we were saying on, on the channel from the middle of January, we just want an answer one way or the other. Someone come up with an answer one way or the other. If they can't do what needed, get rid well, of it. Well, there's them. never going to be an answer but, because the, because Everton Football Club was so tied into it and Farad Mishiri wanted it so much. And the Premier League, at that point, had washed their hands of it. It's mm -hmm. as simple as that. They'd washed their hands of it. Mm -hmm. And it's, <laughs> it's funny because... You know, 26th of February, I think the, the appeal come in and uh, where, we, where it got reduced. And, and then, as you said, you're waiting for another one. But even things like on the day, the Premier League were had to answer a question from the Commons Committee in another <laughs> room. They were doing the Commons Committee for the post office. So it was like you had this massive thing that you wanted loads of attention shined on it. Mm -hmm. And obviously, rightly, in another room yeah. was a much bigger scandal don't get me wrong yeah, yeah it was a much course, bigger yeah. scandal that affected the, the, the lives of, mm. of people yeah so even that was like back sort of it didn't go under the radar for for us obviously mm. it was the we, we saw it front but all this stuff that really should have been front and center about the premier league was a little bit just a little bit uh, under the news radar because mm. obviously this massive another massive story just in the next room down the corridor kind of thing so it's all these little things where like we're once again screaming at the top of our lungs about all these things in the world and not hearing us mm. and it just felt it feels like that being an, it felt like that being an Evertonian for the last couple of years yeah. where everyone's just like oh it doesn't really matter um, and it's just crazy the way like it took three, as you said, it took three months and then, then like forest appeal and this takes, you know, a couple of weeks or whatever. It's just the way it's sort of gone so quick and how ours was 10 and then gets to six and then forest is four and it goes to two and six well, they, to four. Sorry, six to four and they tried to, they tried to get it down to two mm -hmm. and it never happened. And then in the end, we, we don't even go for the second appeal. And it's just like, it's just crazy the way everything has, has happened over the season. But for that one part of the season you had points deduction hanging over huge points deduction hanging over mm. triple seven and all and at the not same winning time, games. not winning games mm. and it's all building up again isn't it mm. for us it's all building up we're hearing we're hearing all these things about you know all oh, the stadium might and then, you know with the administration word starting to rear its head mm. and all these little things if it doesn't go through, what will happen? And they're paying this amount of money, and the pitch is getting sort of clearer and clearer to everybody of what could happen. Or and it's it was just it's just a like you know when you're in it, when you're in that situation as a fan, it's just a, it, the emotions are pulling you left, right, and centre. Mm. 
the manager, luckily, to be fair to him, and you can say say this at the other end, come through the other end, yeah. is he kept his emotions, um, you know, level, yeah. really let yeah. all level at a time when you're looking for that leadership at the football club, and it just doesn't exist because yeah. the leaders decided that he doesn't really care, and he's yeah. passing it, he's passed it on to someone else, and and they're not in the door. And, and the manager did lead it. Didn't yeah, he, he did. He did. did fair play to him. He did. They had obviously we we get into that and. Still looking for that win, and that's still dragging on. And we have that. We come to Burnley. You yeah. know, it was the last time we won a Premier League game, and we Luton have got points, and Burnley have mm. picked a few. And it's a bit of a nervous time. We had that home game with Burnley, and we've had Dominic Calvert Lewin not score, and that was another mm. story. Five yeah. months without a goal, and all that. And I must admit, going into that Burnley game that day, I, well, I was nervous. It was mm. like. We've got to win this game because even we just had to, and everyone's telling you. And even though you're thinking we'll beat these because we're a better team, mm. doesn't that hasn't really mattered, has no. it? Because we haven't been able to beat other teams. No. We felt we were better than, and mm. that was a that was a huge day that day, and it was a huge win, and and it wasn't a very good win in terms of we didn't play very well, and they went down to ten men, and we should have killed it, and we didn't, but we get a mad freak of a goal, you know, Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Grabs a goal, a penalty, a late penalty at Newcastle in a game we should have lost, by the mm, way, yeah, at that yeah. stage. Until the last 20, we come back, done well, and got a good point in the end. And then it's mad he waits five months for a goal, scores a pen. Yeah. And then the next minute on the Saturday, sticks his foot out, yeah. ricochets and goes Charge in Charge him on down. Yeah, and we win the game. That was yeah. a massive day. No, it was a massive day. game. And technically, that's that's the game we stayed up. <laughs> yeah. When you look back. And, Points wise, yeah. Um, and Luton sort of had... had Luton had had a little flourish, hadn't they? And, and they weren't... The thing about them is, even though they, they finished the season really, really poorly, but they, they just... At that time, they weren't really going away. No. And obviously, with... with the with, was with the that, huge, Sorry for butting go on, go on. in. The huge moments, I think, for them, was being 3-0 up at Bournemouth and losing 4-3. Yeah. That really... Yeah. That, could that was a killer for the door moment, yeah, wasn't it? But don't forget, on the day we'd be Burnley, they'd be Bournemouth at home. They did, they did last Whereas week. Whereas if we'd won that day, sort of, and they'd lost, then mm. you would have felt a hell of a lot confident. Oh, yeah. And I'll be honest, I felt the week of the West Ham game and the week of the Bournemouth, uh, sorry, the Brighton game, if we'd managed to, obviously we were 1-0 up in, in both, both games, yeah. and I honestly <laughs> believe if we'd managed to, well, I, I know we would have, if we'd mm. managed to, see both of those games out we would have been safe that week yeah yeah we would have you know brighton going into the 90 whatever minutes and shit. conceding that kind of goal we were starting to concede silly goals like mm. from set pieces like kate zoomers and that was the worry as well that we were conceding the kind of goals we wouldn't concede yeah. and we were going one nil up and not winning games mm. and again that's a factor of like you you know what we're good at and suddenly we're not good at it. Well, we'd, had, we'd also had Crystal Palace at home. And the everyone, Palace were just yeah. about... Well, they just sacked Hodges. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Hodges, Hodgson. Hodgson yeah. And it was like, these are here to be to beaten be beat. tonight. And we went out and we went behind. And mm. that's a, you know we had to come from behind again. And it's like... <clears throat> yeah, and, and that's, that's, that's the point, isn't it? It's like those... You're watching... You're seeing your trends that you think, right, we got one up, we're all right in here. And the Brighton one was such a kick in the... Mm. It, it was such a kick in the box because it was like how late it was and how stupid it was and they were down to 10 men mm. let's not forget that they were down to 10 mm. men in that game it should have been seen out yeah, yeah. and we had we had opportunities in that as well and these opportunities again because we're not winning games these opportunities so I think the Burnley game just became a must win and whatever happens you just do what you need to mm. do and you know you mentioned there we go 1-0 up and and they go down to 10 men and Sean Dice just said, no, we, we're just going to be defensive. Mm. We're getting through this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, they had a couple of moments, couple, give us a couple of scares. Uh, Brownhill's shot, which just went wide. Yeah. Oh, don't get me wrong. We, but it's, you come out that game feeling, I mean, we've won. But, I don't know, that was, that was hard work, yeah. that. But ultimately, it was just about getting the win. Mm. And again, you don't always see that. Maybe if Luton hadn't won that and day. more deflation yeah. because they won an injury time. And maybe if Luton don't win that game, you, you're thinking, oh, that's, we're sorted now. Mm. And and they're just clinging on, aren't they, Luton? And again, it wouldn't matter if the points deduction hadn't been yeah. there. And, um, but then we had, the, we had 
another huge kick and one that terrified me. I won't lie. Yeah. That Chelsea game, yeah. you know, because we went to Chelsea and we had we had been good at staying in games. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking these aren't in great form. No. You know, we could we could easily mm. dog out a one-one here or something. Go yeah. there, frustrate them a little bit. We'd seen Burnley. A couple of weeks mm. before, draw 2-2 two -two there with 10 men after about half an hour and should have won it. They hit the bar twice in injury time and other teams had gone and performed quite well there. Mm. And we lock up and, and absolutely capitulate. It's such a weird game because we everyone thought we had a chance mm. of getting something. Yeah, Every, yeah. I mean, you know, we're not the most positive set of fans at the moment, <laughs> but everyone thought, go down there, keep it tight. And we've got a Nick chance something. of getting something out of yeah. this game. And we went down there and we literally tried to play toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Yeah. But it was like a basketball game. It's, it's like, weird, yeah. they score, we don't score. So who do you think is going to win a basketball mm. game? And I just thought Dice got that completely wrong. Yeah. And the midfield setup was completely wrong. He was playing like Onana and Ghana, pressing midfielders yeah, instead they, of just saying, sit, sit back like we did at Brighton. At Brighton, we had two old midfielders. Mm -hmm. And it was like, come on, break us down. And they couldn't sit like a set piece. And yet we went to Chelsea and we were like, no, we're going to press you. Go on, Cole Palmer. It was just ridiculous. Space. Cole Palmer just sat in the space behind and, and we know what happened. Mm. But it, but I think we all thought that was going to be, uh, this is the beginning of the end of us. Mm. But it wasn't. It went the other way. And what was real, but what was funny was, I remember, I remember thinking on the Saturday morning, Luton were playing... They were playing uh, Brentford. Mm -hmm. And I was like, if Luton win and Forrest beat us tomorrow, we're playing Liverpool and we're in the bottom three. Bottom three yeah. And that's how you, that's where the, your mm -hmm. mind takes you, doesn't you? Mm -hmm. And it's, it is mad. Luckily, Brentford... Brentford needed to win. Luckily, Brentford went to Luton and battered them. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, the next day we play Forrest and we get the win and we get a little touch of luck in the game. Don't get me wrong, we did. But we got a 2 0 win, and obviously they climbed it in, and, and that's what the new sto big story was. But it just shows you where those little flips are, those little moments are. Mm. You know, Luton grind out a win, and then you're looking at that game going, Jesus, this is a, like a must win, and the pressure's clanked mm. on you. But Luton not winning took the pressure off a little bit, mm. and then we go and do a job and getting the second goal. And, and that, I mean, the pressure for that, that I know Luton, Luton got a spanking and that. That did make everyone yeah, sort of yeah. go, actually, you know what? They're not great. Mm. But it's still a huge pressure on that Forest yeah. game. Forest win that. Nah, yeah. Different story. And, you know, like you say, we did we did have a little bit of the rub of the green, but we did take our chances and we won the game. You know, two good mm. goals, Garner and Dwight McNeil. And we come to a Merseyside derby, which was, which was a little bit of a free hit because of the win yeah. against Forest. Well, what we did, we were saying yeah. it's a derby, and, and if Liverpool play to the best of their ability, and that they should win the game, but results at Goodison Park, they haven't won that many in the last ten or fifteen years, had they? And what to, to go and do what no. happened was. Tremendous. I mean, it's it's funny, isn't it? It's like uh, you get these moments. This game should never have been played at that time. Yeah. It should have been played on the seventeenth of March, and mm. and if it being played on, I don't know, that's the day Liverpool sort of their run started because he went to Old Trafford in the they cup could. and got beat late on and mm. that's where it started Wobbled setting them for them and we got the infamous three week break um, Slapgate um, <laughs> one day to prepare gate yeah, uh, yeah one day to prepare for three weeks off lads. Mm. Um, and we then we end up playing and, and it's funny, funny going into that game because I remember loads of people saying should leave Dom out because obviously he hadn't started with Chelsea and come back for the for the Forest game, mm. it's like, should leave Dom out, doesn't, you know, this, leave this one, leave, mm. play Schmitty. Because we're, because of Saturday. Yeah, play, and I was, I was like, no, play Dom, to me, is that Derby, mm. at the end of the day, you've got to respect, you've got to respect the Derby, um, and it played out that it was our best performance. It was tremendous. But it, it's our best performance in, in many a year, mm. um, you know, for it, for Reds to just say, we were lucky to get away with the 2 nil here, mm is you know and for the team actually to only have what 26 percent possession and yet everybody say you, you deserve more you know mm -hmm. john pickford had to make big saves and yet everyone said you destroyed them mm -hmm. was was a huge moment for that collective you know we'd seen dice with the tracksuit and all that yeah. but it become the collective of like we're all in this together it was mm -hmm. like the day not like the day the penny dropped but it was like 
It just felt like this is this is that's how good that team can play. Even if it's not silky smooth, amazing no. football, it's how good that team can play. Do you think it, 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 he deserves on the coaching staff deserve big credit because he's he come out and said himself they mm. basically they had to clear the air after that yeah. because the the players weren't happy with him mm. clearly and he wasn't happy with them and and he he did go and put a tracky on took his suit off and yeah. and Everton stepped up to a big a big week three home games mm. in a week. History tells you Everton don't win three home games in a week. When yeah. we've had those chances mm. in the past, we've fluffed our lines. I was more nervous in but, between the Derby and the Brentford game than I was before the Derby. Right. Because it was for me, it was like, this is the opportunity. Mm. Don't have to go to Luton then. Yeah. There's no pressure yeah, on that yeah, game. Yeah. And it was and then you don't have to go to Sheffield United. And even though it was like deep down you are thinking Luton only earns another point mm. in the, and mm. that was against us, I honestly. <laughs> yeah. But it was like Luton the, you know, you you're working out scenarios and you don't want the stress for another week and having to think about it. And I thought more about the connotations of points in those two days because I knew it was so close. It was being 2-0 yeah, up in the main side derby in the 85th minute. That's the only way I can think about it. Mm. Because in your head in the 85 minute, you're just thinking, something, if these get one now, oh my God. Mm. And luckily we eked out the Brentford game as well. You know, again, it's margins if... James Garner's foot have been slightly higher as he's walking away from the goal. It's it's not it's not given, mm. um, and we get it. And and then everyone can relax, and then you go to Luton. Okay, we get a point, and and then Sheffield United takes care of itself, and then and Arsenal takes care of itself. Um, but it was just massively important, just massively important. We got over the line, and as we said before. Ironically, we were safe after the Burnley game, but. You can't always think like that because the. I mean, it's it's the same with when we got when we scored when we won against Palace. We were actually safe against Watford. Yeah, we were safe against Watford, but but no one can tell you at that time no. that that you're safe. So, but the opportunity is still there for everybody else. Mm. So you can't. I mean, you know, we and did three wins in a week. I mean, I seen someone. It was the Echo actually. I'm a bit disappointed that someone didn't prove three there because mm. they said they don't finish the season with three wins in the final six games to finish strongly. We actually won four of our last six yeah. and we won five of our last seven. Yeah, yeah. So we finished all right or five of our last eight. We finished eight. brilliant. Five of our last eight we won. Um, and it's, and know, we finished strongly and, and to do that. And we finished above Brentford. Mm. So there's an extra three million quid. Mm. We've lost 10 million quid because of the deductions, which is crazy. Which it's, it's do- Again, it's double jeopardy, it's isn't crazy. it? It's, it's, it's absolutely, it is absolutely crazy. It's, it's absolutely strong. crazy that we've lost places. Lost money. And we've lost all and that money. Be punished because of that yeah. next season. But what you've done to us, and that Everton yeah. should use that as mitigation. Let's have a look at Everton's uh, the stats from the season, uh, the Premier League season. Thirteen victories for Sean Dyche, nine draws, mm. sixteen defeats. If it VAR had been used correctly, it would have been fifteen defeats. <laughs> um, points deducted, eight. We finished with forty. But obviously, as you said before, Ped, we won. 48 points this season and, and overall the manager has done a good job in very very trying circumstances mm. two points deductions an ownership thing that's still going on mm. we've got to the end of the season we've ended up with the fourth or fifth best defensive record in the premier league mm. jordan pick for 13 clean sheets actually got a higher save rate percentage than david ryer who won the golden glove yeah. thing um one thing I think we need to we need to correct is goals. You know, we yeah. still don't score anywhere no. near enough goals and, and we've we've ended up and our set- the second lowest scorers yeah. in the Premier League. And all our goals come from set pieces generally. Well yeah, well Everton are the you know, they are the most effective set piece team in the league, both offensively and defensively. Mm. Um, that's, and that's, that's, that's the work that's the work done on the training pitch with mm. the manager, isn't it? That's what he's that's what he's honed down on, you know, that's where he's made made us much better he's given us an effective way of scoring goals mm. um, you know especially from the right from the right hand side corners with Dwight McNeil putting it to the back post that's where we've become more effective and he's really honed in on that and that's old school that's old school coaching isn't it that's okay it's not the pretty triangles in the middle of the pitch or anything but that's the old school but so he's he is what he is you know he is that kind of manager mm. he doesn't he doesn't um, make excuses for that and that gives you, I suppose that gives you hope that that whatever mm. happens with the players and stuff, that mm. whoever comes in will be drilled over not only the summer, but even more importantly over the season. Because mm. what we showed with the season is you can get off to a bad start and you can grow into a season. 
You'd want it. I mean, 13 wins. If you've got 13 wins spread out evenly over a yeah, season, yeah. you're not worrying mm. when you're full. Mm. You're, yeah. not, you're not worrying one bit. And I think mm. that's what's been mad about this season is like we've had two big chunks mm. of winning games. And if you could even that out and remove that anxiety that has followed us around, for, mm. then it would make... And listen, you can't... It's, you can't just... Obviously, you can't just do that. But if you could... If you could then that makes everyone's lives a little bit easier because you can you remove that you remove those obstacles those mental obstacles that we all face. Mm. I just don't think we can we just can't afford to go that many games regardless of where we are. No Everton in my opinion, no Everton seems to go three months without winning a game of football, four months without winning a game of football. But it was what it was. It was that season. It's done. It's done a good job. We can draw a line under it. We've obviously got bigger. Things needing sort now, like the ownership and mm. but the manager and the coaching staff have done all they can, and, and the players have as well. And like we say, we won 48 points. Mm. The legal show something different, but hey ho, we won 48 points and we're safe. Mm. Uh, bright spots, I know we're going to do player of the year separately and all that, but bright spots for the year, it's got to be the partnership of Brantwaite and Tarkovsky, I think, and the importance of Adrissa Garner Gay, I would say, as well, within that. Any, anything different? For, no, for not really. I think, I think. I think Jordan Pickford sort of get finally getting the respect he deserves mm. is 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 something, um, and that's told because of the clean sheets. But obviously the the partnership, the partnership, Michalenko growing mm. as a yeah, as a yeah, as a true. as a real part of of everything. Um, yeah, those those two, and mm. and obviously who knows we might have seen the last the last time, but those two, the goalkeeper, and obviously a disagreement kind of again, oh. and, and also towards the end of the season, the return of. I would say the real Dominic Carvalho. Well, I was going to say, I was going to finish on that with, it's he's completed the season basically for mm. the first time. I know he got the cheek injury, but in general he's been fit the whole season mm. for the first time in, in three and I, I, finished it yeah. really strong. I think his sharpness didn't. came back mm. maybe after the break. Maybe. Yeah. The three-week mm. break. I, mm. I think he was fit, but I don't think he was ever sharp. Dice fit. Clearly, clearly, <laughs> but I just don't think that sharp, the trust in his own body, yeah. I don't think was there. Mm. And towards the end of the season, I think you've seen that return, the leaps, the the burst of pace. And he's got a song now. He's got a song. Um, he's him to sign a contract. <laughs> yeah, could do, could do with him signing a contract. Obviously, we're heading into the, the final season at Goodison Park, and, and let's hope that it's a... It's a fit one. It's a fit one. And, and this is the final point. Now, one thing we have seen across the season is the emergence of... Everton new stadium at Bramley mm. Moor Dock. It, it's it just week by week yeah, looking yeah. unbelievable. We are moving, yeah. of course, closer and closer to. That's been incredible to see, even in a season where it has been depressing at times. Yeah. Those, well, depressing a lot mm. of the time. I think I've said loads of times the worst, my worst ever season supporting Everton yeah. for just all of the stuff that went on. But that has that's it. it you can't fail to be impressed. With no, that, it's amazing. It's there. It's it. It looks exactly like it does. In the in the pitches, it's, and it does now. And mm. in a year's time, we'll be all looking forward to moving into it. Mm. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm I, as I've said a million times. I'm I'm you ready? I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Been ready for a long time. It'll be a sad day when we leave Goodison Park, but it's 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 onwards and upwards. Mm. And I think for a lot of people, it's the hope. It's that's the hope that keeps you going. Because mm. if it wasn't there, God, we'd feel ten times worse about the situation. Let's finish on a positive note. Forty-eight points. Mm. The manager's done a good job. Let's hope we can get some. You know, will be. It's listen. It's going to be a bit bumpy this summer. We just got to accept it. But let's hope we come on the other side in a strong place. But let us know how you, what you think about the season. What is your your highlight from the season? Let us know in the comment section below. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Thanks for watching. See you later.